video, I wanna talk about the idea of finding your voice as a photographer, finding your personal style. I think for many of us, this is one of the ultimate goals that we have as photographers, and it's one of the most important things. It's also one of the most difficult things to achieve because it's not something you can do just in watching one video or reading one article online. It's something that requires a lot of practice and quite frankly, a lifetime commitment to what you're doing in photography. And so I wanna break this down a little bit today. First, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor, who are the awesome folks over at squarespace.com. If you need a website, Squarespace have you covered with an all-in-one solution for building beautiful galleries, portfolios, or even an online store. Head over to Squarespace and check out their amazing backend system. It's a drag and drop interface. You don't have to know how to do any coding to build a gorgeous website. You just pick one of their templates, start to customize it, upload your images, drag and drop to reset sort and you have a website. So head over to Squarespace. You can do their free trial. And if you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on checkout by using offer code AOP. Once again, that offer code is AOP. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the folks at Squarespace for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So part of why this topic is kind of fresh on my mind right now is I just got back from New York City. Earlier this week, I did my street photography workshop with Hugh Brownstone. It was an amazing success. And this is one of the things that we kind of aim to cover in this is finding that unique voice and specifically what Hugh and I addressed on this if you're going to do a workshop there needed to be something special about that and for us it came down to what is the experience of that and so being able to get together as a group that wasn't too large and be able to have one-on-one -on -one time not only with us but with each other I think that's one thing that really helps now the focus of this workshop was street photography street photography has always been completely fascinating to me it's something that I absolutely love of because for me, it represents a sense of improvisation. And it's kind of like jazz music in that sense. You know, when you do studio photography, if you're doing fashion or portraits, you have control over what's happening in the studio. You have control of the way people look, who's in the frame, who's in the photo, you have control of the composition, you have control of the color, all of those elements, the lighting are things that you can control as a photographer. Now street photography is kind of the opposite of that because you don't have control and street photography kind of starts getting into photojournalism in a way and I don't want this video to be about you know finding truth in the photography or what you're seeing but it is an interpretation and it's a reaction to what's happening around you and as a street photographer you have to have an idea of composition, an idea of what it is that you're trying to convey but in the end you have to kind of forget about that hope it seeps into your subconscious and you have to react to what's happening around you and I think that's one of the biggest challenges and this week when we were doing this a lot of the practice you find in street photography that almost everything lines up but something's not working in the composition maybe somebody's in the frame that's it's a distraction or the angle isn't just right or the decisive moment wasn't even on even the decisive moment let's be honest sometimes you get a great moment with a great reaction with the subject but there's something about the photograph that doesn't work. So also with street photography, much like improvisation, you have to be able to understand and be okay with the fact it doesn't always work and that you can come back into it at another time and you're going to have successes down the future. But those failures, all those things add up into it. Now, the way we organized our street photography workshop was we had three days and the first two days we did kind of a balance of classroom stuff that we did at Hasselblad's amazing Soho space. So thanks to Hasselblad for letting us use that. We combine some in the classroom stuff with actual shooting and it was kind of fun because everybody was looking at their phones on the health app to see how many miles we walked and I think one day we did up to eight miles so we did a considerable amount of shooting and it was a lot of fun and it was also really interesting in getting to know the group for me and I can say this just personally that I love teaching. It's something that I have a lot of experience doing. Now, when I do these videos and I make tutorials for you guys to watch online, there's really not an actual interaction between you and I. I'd like to think there is, and I, I, I try to go for it with that in mind, but it's not one-on-one -on -one where we can converse. It's just kind of a one-way video kind of thing. And so it was really nice for me to get back into a class type of situation where I'm able to work with people because there's an energy that comes from that. It's also fascinating for me to see the different backgrounds of people because essentially as photographers, and I think this shows up in particular with street photography and that improvisational style, is that we all have various backgrounds. There's things in our past, for better or worse, that all combine and culminate into the person we are today. And part of the challenging in that is to transfer that somehow into a visual language of what you want to be able to communicate and be able to use that as a photographer. And, you know, you think of the great street photographers or any great photographer, that's essentially what they do is they have that 
that visual language that they're able to communicate with. And I was really proud of the work that a lot of people did. And I think that a lot of people opened their eyes to some new things. We had an absolute blast. Of course, Hugh used to live in New York, so he has a really good handle on lighting and what's going to happen during certain times of the day at certain times of the year. So we kind of plan things accordingly, but we pretty much went everywhere. We went to Washington Square Park. We went to Soho. We went to the Flatiron. We went to Madison Square Park. We went down to Chinatown. Little Italy, you name it, within at least Lower Manhattan, we covered it. And it was absolutely amazing. And I'm really proud of the work that some of the guys were doing. But on the third day, we had some inspiration and some surprises lined up. And one of the things we did is we went over to Whitewall, who are one of our workshop sponsors. Whitewall do incredible work. It's a printing company, and they showed us a variety of techniques and papers and things that they do to make your work look absolutely incredible. They have an amazing studio right there in Soho. After that, we went over to ICP, and this was extra special. There were two exhibitions going on right now, and one of them is a themed exhibition exploring the concept of identity. And when you go to ICP, it's well curated, and it's a really interesting show, really talking about all areas of identity. So for instance, with street photography, who has the right to take a photo? Who has the right to be photographed or not photographed? And how does that interpretation impact things? And it went way deeper than that. They covered things like photo booths. They covered identification cards, wanted signs. Uh, they even covered Amelia Earhart's portrait was in there. It was a fabulous exhibition, and there's a lot of photography that you guys have seen on here, some of which from the artist series as well. They had two great exhibitions going on, and then we also that day were able to go over to a wonderful gallery in Soho called Staley Wise. And Staley Wise has been around for years now, and they're the gallery that really is quite responsible for bringing the idea of fashion photography into the art world. And so their collection is pretty outstanding. They've got prints in there from all the luminaries, people like Irving Penn, Herb Ritz, Helmut Newton, so on and so forth. You name them, they've got it. And we had an absolutely beautiful time there. And of course, what New York trip would be complete without a walk across the Brooklyn Bridge? And so this was kind of the last component uh, that we did to close things out. And it was a lot of fun just to go up there, take pictures and hang out and reflect on the last three days. At this point, the group had gotten really tight and it was a lot of fun. And the Brooklyn Bridge is amazing. It's always crowded. I've been up there many times and always in different lighting situations at different times of day and there is a magic to that place that is just simply unbelievable. So I want to thank all of our amazing workshop attendees. You've seen their work here. I'm really proud of what they were producing. It was a really exciting group of people and I just had the best time ever. And it was a lot of fun to be able to come together as a group and study something that we had a shared passion for. And that's the advice that I want to give you guys. And a lot of people have contacted me and, and I know this was short notice on this workshop, but people are saying, you know, I'm too late. Is there, are you going to do another one? Will it keep me posted? I think we are. Hugh and I have talked about it and this was a lot of fun. And I think in particular, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, I realize that I'm a part of internet culture with my YouTube channel and making these videos, and you guys are part of that as you consume them. And as much as we all have this shared passion for photography, I think it's important to go out and find somebody who's a mentor, whether it's us or whether you take a workshop with somebody else, find somebody who you look up to, who you like their work, and, and study with them and ask them the questions that you want to ask and get feedback. I think that's really essential. And if not that, just find a group situation where you can find a group of like-minded 
like-minded people with the same passion that you can come together and share ideas with. Those things are absolutely essential. I think that's one thing that starts becoming a little bit more rare when you start looking online for information for photography. So I think for me personally, and I'm not going to speak for Hugh, but I'm sure he feels the same way. It's a really nice balance for us um, as educators to be able to do that as well. So I'll keep you guys posted when we start planning future workshops and when the next one might be. And uh, this has been a crazy month, but I'm looking forward to being back in the studio and getting back in the swing of things a little bit. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Drop me a comment if there's any questions. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.